What's going on, everybody? It's me, the PRI of me, and I am here today with a very special guest. We got, I'm going to just, I'm not going to go down on accolades. I'm going to just say we got the legendary Theo Peoples here today. Theo, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, my friend. How about yourself? Uh, I am good. Uh, you know, it took, took a while to get this happen, but we're, we're good. We're here. Everything is, is good. Yeah. Um, Theo, uh, if, you don't, if you guys don't know, it's one of my favorite uh, singers. Obviously, big fan of Temps and, and everything. So it's good to get this, you know, get this thing to happen. Um, you know, obviously, I'm going to just tell you this short story. Uh, I saw you were doing, I think you were doing guest spots or something with Dennis's group at yeah. a time. And uh, I saw you then, but I didn't have like a show or anything. Yet, so I just seen you then. I was like, oh, Theo is still out here. Okay, cool. And then there's this video on YouTube. You're singing Lady Soul. And I was like, oh, okay. This is when I had a show. So I was like, okay, maybe I can reach Theo somehow. And uh-huh. then somehow, some way it just fizzled because I was like early in my show. And then I seen you doing Voices of Classic Soul. But all right, this is the time. I have to get Theo on somehow, some way. Uh, and then it all came together. So I just wanted to say, like, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yes. So question about the steps. I already, you know, we talked about uh, Charlie Atkins and all. But um, question as to which step, like, because obviously when you're joining the team, she probably don't know obviously everything. So which step was like, this is actually very difficult to do and sing. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't dancing. I'm, I'm sitting behind the piano and singing. And so I feel confident about my singing uh, abilities, but, oh, no, I got to learn how to dance. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to be a, a chore. So, uh, we were off the road. We would go. They would fly me back out, and we rehearse. And Charlie Atkins was just... It was, this guy was just excellent at what he does. He could even tell when I rehearsed or when I did not rehearse. Yep. I had to quit playing and then take it seriously. So it took me about eight months off and on to, to pretty much learn the routines. So uh, with you, because uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, a lot of people I would say personally get this wrong. The, the actual temptations walk, right? Yeah. Some people I see, they do it like this and they lead with their arms up. So like, was that different for you? Because I see like a, a lot of people, I guess, do it their way. But, you know, I call it the four. Like your leg got to be in the four almost for you uh log yeah. in. So how was that? That was probably the easiest one to do. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. The temptation walk was kind of primary compared to all of the other routines that they done per song. So uh yeah, it was it was not an easy job. So and everything has got to be routine. Everybody has to do it the same way. And, and Pops was a stickler on that and taught me very well. Uh do you have a favorite? A favorite routine? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been asked that question. <laughs> I, I guess I'm no. I, I'm going to say no. I didn't have a favorite routine because I, I wasn't happy to do them. I just knew I needed to do them in order to be a temptation. I don't know. For some reason, I like the routine of treated like a lady. I don't know. Maybe it's just that's a lot of parts moving. Maybe that's just why. Yeah. Uh, a lot. That one was one of the hard ones. And you're doing the routines and you're trying to sing and you're trying to without running out of breath. Yeah. Yeah. Because they do it faster than the actual song. So um, yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But I tell you what, you get a uh, one hell of a cardiovascular workout. Yes, yes. Especially how when you were doing they the songs were kind of more sped up than how the track is so that's Correct. definitely you know you gotta uh especially the even the first 
the first little notes to uh the way you do things you do the look you kick I, I, yeah i can understand yeah um thing was sped up because we got a lot of songs to cover within one hour yes it was kind of high intense <laughs> i can imagine i think the only song that was slowed down maybe was uh uh just my imagination maybe yep or i wish it would rain other than that we we're going we're going that's it, correct yes uh so okay i have a few questions here for you personally that i want to know if it's either true or false or it did something is this somewhat true um the super bowl right mm-hmm. that's performed at the super bowl is it true or fabricated that the four tops were supposed to perform and pull it out the day of um which Super Bowl? Because there were two that I can remember that I was a part of. The one that you did with the Temps. The other one was with the Tops. Okay. The one I did with the Temps was uh, Queen Latifah and Boys to Men on that show as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the Tops did have to pull out for I don't know what reason. Yeah. I would say that's true. Okay. Because uh, you guys performed. I forgot which song at the moment I can even think of. But you guys performed uh, a top song. And, like, to me, I thought it was cool. But then when I seen this video saying, like, the tops were supposed to be there, I'm like, it kind of makes sense because why would the Timbs do a top song? And why would this random explosion where you would assume people were supposed to be at is going off when nobody's there? So, okay, makes sense. I like it. Uh, how was that for you, though, real quick? How was that, like, performing at the Super Bowl? Because yeah. That's one of my mountaintop moments. Um, I've never being to a Super Bowl, of, well, a football game, let alone the Super Bowl. And you get to perform at the halftime show. That was a mountaintop moment for me. And I remember it specifically because it was my birthday. And I had tickets. They gave us two tickets, and they were like the 50 yard line third, fourth row back. And so I went out to the front of the stadium and sold my two tickets, $1,500 a ticket. People jumped on it. And so I sold my tickets. I'm already in the the Super Bowl. So I sung the halftime show and then got back in the car and went back to my hotel and watched the rest of the game with $3,000 in my pocket. So that was one hell of a birthday for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a good day. Honestly, <laughs> um, uh, another question uh, for you is uh, I heard you were offered or somewhat, uh, I guess, approached to join Earthman and Fire. Is that any truth to that? Somewhat. Okay. Uh, the right. opportunity came up and a friend of mine by the name of Tanisha Jackson, I believe she was in constant contact with them and they were looking for a lead, a lead singer. And so she called me and asked me would I be interested and uh, I just I couldn't see myself being a part of Earth, Wind & Fire even though that's one of my favorite groups in the whole world. Can you, can you tell me what era this was? Like what year-ish do you remember? Oh my God. It had to be between leaving the temps and joining the tops. Oh my oh, oh my gosh. That was but during that time, you know, I was yeah. myself. Um the problem that I have, which I I will say though, that is probably one of my favorite eras of Earth Wind and Fire because it's like they had a uh they had to rethink what they were doing since Maurice left. Right. And they just they just went completely 90s. Like we just gonna be current and old school at the same time. And I, that's that's my one of my favorite airs. That's that's when Philip Bailey had his stepping out party again. So yep. Yep. <laughs> um, I also seen uh seen this and I sent you a clip. I don't know if you actually watched it, but y'all want y'all want the TV show. Uh getting by it's like Delma Hopkins. I watched it. Yep. 
now, how was that? Because Tim's on a lot of shows, you know, a lot of appearances, but this is, I would say maybe one of your only ones, maybe your first ones that I can find. So just how was that experience of like, oh, you get to be on this show? Yeah, that was a different experience. Um, uh, you know, singing and performing is one thing, but now you're throwing acting in the basket. And I'm like, okay. You know, and I only had one little line. Well, like, I think it was, and she'll believe that. And that was a day. career <laughs> <laughs> of being an actor. But yeah, all of that was a new experience and an enjoyable experience for me. I mean, I like the clip because it's like, uh, it's like Otis and Melvin and like, remember that fellas? And obviously the people that weren't in the group at the time, like, yeah, I remember. I was like, well, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, right. We were supposed to be playing like we remembered it. Yeah. And, and to play like we pointed at her, which was Shirley, I believe, at the time. And yes, yes. And Laverne said, Well, just tell her you remember it, it'll make her day. <laughs> so we told her, We remember you, you stood up or whatever it was, and, and we yeah. pointed directly at you. Yeah, it was nice. I, yeah, I, I like uh, stuff like that. They were obviously in other shows. They had a, you know, they did have a renaissance. They had like, I would say a few renaissances, but that was one of theirs where I feel like they were starting to get back in the public more, um, which is cool. You know, I, I like that. Um, there's one thing that I have to ask that I, 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 as a fan, I'm glad that you got to experience this moment. It's the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, ceremony. How was that for you? Because I, this is the Walk of Fame. Obviously, there could be any other person maybe that could have got it, but you are the one that's hanging up in your room somewhere. I don't know where at, but it's hanging up somewhere. How was that for you? Uh, I had mixed emotions on that because I did not feel as though I deserved star on Hollywood but you have to keep in mind I hadn't been in the group six months so whose star frame am I taking was it Richard Streets the guy I replaced could it be Edwards I don't know but yeah I have that and it hangs on my wall today and I, I still when I look at it I hadn't did anything to deserve it. So I guess being a part of the temptations meant that I get that. So so I have it, but you know, it would be nice to have one that fix all of the work that I've done, you know, which would have more sentimental value to me. But yeah, I, I, I have that star on Hollywood Boulevard. And that was a cool experience to even be at the ceremony. So it was just, it was nice. I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. Uh, you know, there are a lot of times where I, I felt like I want to say I felt like you got it because they probably should have gave it to more people at the Hall at the actual Hall of Fame that they did. But that's just my opinion. I I would have gave it to Richard Street as well, and you know, other members. But that's just me. You know, uh, Classic Six and Dennis are cool, but. Like it's still a little more, you know. Richard Street was like the ultimate, the ultimate utility guy. Got right. people after that, obviously Ali, and so that's just my, you know, my thing. And Ron Tyson should have got it. That, that. So, you know, it, it varies. But there are so many members of the Temps, where it's kind of like we don't. A lot of people don't know every single guy, so I can understand. So, right. you know, um, you want to talk about Melvin Franklin? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. I'm Melvin, in my opinion, was the heart and soul of the group. Um, when I th think of The Temptations, uh, I think of Melvin because my first shows were in Japan. And Melvin took me under his wing, <clears throat> told me what to do, what's going to happen. Everybody, all eyes are going to be on you, Theo. And I'm like, well, why? Well, you're the new guy. And so I'm a little apprehensive. Pray. <clears throat> And so he kind of took me up under his wing. Um, we would go out to dinner after the shows, and he turned me on to sushi for the first time in my life. So I never ate raw fish before. And Melvin, and at that time, his wife's name was Kim. They were 
it pretty much taught me the ropes, the ins and the outs of how to be a temptation off stage as well as on stage. Yeah, I can see a couple of performances that I've seen with you and Melvin's kind of like, I, I don't want to say you guys are the close, we're the closest, but it's like, you know, you, you do a bow and you guys are like touching hands and so you guys are doing like a, so I was like, okay, that's, uh, I, I like to see that. Um, I feel like Melvin, not only was he the heart, he was always the one, the more approachable person. Not to say that anybody else is, but like Melvin is smiling. Even in clips, he always finds the camera pointing at it. So I, I feel like he's always the more open guy in the group. Um, so were you were you in that? So you was in it before he got sick, before he really kind of was feeling everything, right? Okay. Uh, I don't want to, you don't got to go in detail, but how was like that when he wasn't necessarily there anymore because they haven't had to replace a base for the whole temps and they had to find a replacement. How was that experience? If you were even a part of that experience or know how that went. I was a part of that experience. Melvin had um, chronic arthritis to the point to where he said, if I could just wake up and do day with no pain, I was the happiest man on earth. So he dealt with that as best he could. He took a lot of what you, cortisone shots so that he could continue to do the show. And I, man, yeah, I was there for all of that. And I remember specifically the day that he could not finish a tour. Robin had a score or something on his arm and it would not heal. And then it came to start getting infected. And we're on tour buses, so we didn't want to catch whatever this infection was. So I remember Otis saying, well, go ahead on, man. We got one week left. You go on home, and we'll finish the tour. So we had Ray Davis out of Funkadelic. And then you know, the spot while recovering. Well, so I think the last date that we did, we were singing the national anthem at the 49ers football game. I can't remember who they were playing. And so Melvin's at home. Melvin loved football. Had no idea that uh, Ray Davis was actually standing in for him. So when Melvin turned that football game on and saw <laughs> Ricky Davis standing in his spot, felt as though he had been replaced. And this is just my opinion. Um, I've seen Melvin before, and much sicker than he was, and then he would come out smelling like a rose. And when he saw that, three weeks later, Melvin passed. I think it was because of a broken heart. Wow. Standing in That's the- deep. Yeah. 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 I, I was, so like the TV show or the Temptations movie where they had him in a wheelchair in Mama Rose's kitchen. Oh, that ain't true. Yeah. I, I, I think he had like a coma, right? It was a coma or something. Something like that. Melvin died at Cedar Sinai Hospital. Yeah. We yeah. all got to go and see him before he passed. And it just looked like his heart was broken to me. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that I just always wanted to know because I Melvin is one of the biggest, I feel like maybe one of the biggest, if not the biggest member of the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for the sake of everything. Um, but I'm gonna move on a little bit because we, we got more stuff to go and uh, a little bit of time. I want to talk about. One of my favorite temp songs, one of the driving forces behind a revitalization of the temps, and that's stay. Uh you you did stay, and uh I don't I'm pretty sure you didn't know it's gonna be this much of a hit to where it revitalized the temps, but can you just tell me about recording this song? Can I do what? Tell me about recording the song. Uh, sure. I, Narada Michael Walden was the quarterback of the producer of all of that. And 
it had the flavor of my girl with the same guitar line running throughout the whole song and Rada said this is going to be a hit and I kind of believed him that it did that particular album Phoenix Rising yes. pretty much what put the tips back into the limelight so to speak in regards to tips have something new yeah, uh, like I said, it's one of their revitalization points. They had a, a few, but this was one of their main ones. Because this and the movie kind of clashed together, and then it kind of was like, okay, now we're 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 getting business until I don't know, two thousand two, maybe I don't I don't know when the date was, but we're we're in business. Yeah. Um, I only name that song like that's even one of my mom's favorite songs of y'all. Like it's it's just it's a lot because you know me being a Tempus fan, I. I I like a lot of Tim's songs. Obviously, there's one lead singer, but I do like the songs where everybody can kind of uh, get their their shine into, mm-hmm. and definitely one of their one of their ones. Uh, but all right, we're gonna switch pages. Uh, gonna go kind of, you know, gonna switch pages a little bit. You obviously joined Four Tops uh, after you left the you know Tim's for you know a few months. They brought you in. They were three, and they became four again. Hey. When you join the tops, obviously choreography very different. Don't use as much microphone stands. You got to hold the mic most of the time. Yeah. How was that transition of I'm not holding the mic now, like holding the mic for like almost the whole show? I enjoyed that. I mean, because they didn't have any routines, so to speak, their signature moves, which was the rock comes to left to right. Yeah. Sway front to back. And that was it. So they were more of a freestyle type yeah. group. And yeah, at that time, Levi was singing lead and Lawrence Payton had passed and had, had been gone for two or three years. And I don't think that they were going to replace him out of honor and respect for Lawrence Payton. And they heard that I was the temptations. And OB, we were playing golf, and they expressed interest. Hi, I mean, they said, but Theo, you got to get yourself together first. Yeah, well, I'm in the process of doing that. He says, well, we're going to wait maybe six to eight months, and make sure the temps aren't going to hire you back, or, you know, we don't want to you know, disrespect them. And sure enough, they called me and offered me a job. The very next day, Otis Williams called patients and said, uh, Theo, we kind of want to put you on a retainer. I said, for what? Oh, well, I just kind of want to look out for you. Said, well, I'm going to have to pass on that retainer because I got the job with the Four Tops. And he said, oh, well, congratulations, man. That's great. I think he already knew. <laughs> yeah, that's- could have had some intel of maybe he could probably thought you were probably thinking about it maybe not that you took it maybe so mm-hmm. and by the tents and the tops working together all the time it yep. has been news so that was huh. this is the off-brand question did y'all ever do those uh anything related to the versus type of things where temps and tops on the stage at the same time special concerts or anything? Because I know there are many of them, but I don't know if there are any with you on there or any of them. Yeah, the TNT thing where we would all walk out on the stage at the beginning of the show together. The Temps would sing top songs and the Tops would sing Temp songs. Yes, I was a part of that. Interesting. See, I try to find all the footage I can. I cannot find any of that anywhere. So I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try to see what I can find. I remember um, Trap. Say it again. Venue called Wolf Trap down in Virginia. Uh, that's where we did that a lot. I mean, I really, as soon as I had joined the group, the Tents and the Tops were still doing that as a part of the routine. So, yeah, I got baptized in fire with that one, too. So. <laughs> I mean, it's so good. That's the whole, you can do that for a whole show. Literally, if they do that now, that 10, 
minutes or whatever. That, mm-hmm. you can, that's it. You, that's all you got to do. You're good. I feel like, you know, I feel like you're good. Um, <laughs> okay. I have a question about a, a switch that happened in the group that uh, isn't probably monumental to other people, but for the tops, I feel like it was very monumental. And it's the the switching what? of the lead singer, if that makes sense. Not Levi and you. I'm talking about switching as in a placement. Because uh, Levi was at the end. And then somewhere he started transitioning into the middle by, you know, uh, I would say by you. So do you know why that happened or you just t- accepted it? Um, let's see. We were in Vegas. At, um, oh, I can't think of maybe the Desert Inn Casino. And we were doing a show with the Temps and the Tops and Levi. He did Monday through Saturday. And a Thursday night, Levi was so hoarse he could barely talk, let alone sing. And so he he struggled through the show. And after that, the very next night, he felt better and he was singing. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, I've been blessed to be able to perform for you guys for over 47 years. And I am honored. It's been an honor and a privilege. And everybody clapped for it, gave him a standing ovation. And after that, he says, well, nobody knows this yet, but I'm just going to put it out there. Tonight will be my last night. Allow me to introduce to you the I didn't even know. I was blindsided with this. So <clears throat> at the end, we had to do the medley at the end of the show. And he let me do that medley. And I'm I'm scared to death. <laughs> I'm sweating bullets. I don't remember all these words. I'm just singing background. I'm, I hadn't been put in that spot. So I made it through it. But for him to have kind of passed the torch to me was, was an honor that was totally unexpected. But appreciated. And it was a blessing. So... Yes. Always, my stubs will always be in my heart. The tops in general, I, I love the four tops. So they they took great care of me. And then, uh, you know, you just, I feel like, I feel like y'all had fun though, because like, obviously, like you said, the more freestyle. And not to say that it doesn't look more fun, but y'all can have more fun with whatever you guys can do movement-wise, other than those, you know, uh, those cornerstone moves. Uh, I feel like who had the most fun, I would say is maybe uh, Obi had the most fun. Yep. Because every time I see a video of him, he just is, he's just doing it. It just, it's just fun to watch. He's <laughs> all over the place. I mean, Obi was, that was just his thing. That's what made him Ob Benson, and and their show was so relaxed and more. They drew the audience in more on what they were doing than I would say the Temptations. The Temptations, everything was had to go yeah. a certain way, yeah. which was great too. And that was that was their mo of having great routines, having different lead singers, and that went off well. But the tops, Levi Stubb had a way of working that audience where he would pull them into the show or say something to a couple out of the audience. Hey, do you love her? And the man said, yeah. He said, well, kiss her. <laughs> Not on the cheek, kiss her in the mouth. He would do stuff like that and just pull people in, and that made the tops show different. And but the two groups together, it was phenomenal. I, I mean, man, that's that's something that I believe is going to go on. They want to stop it. Yeah, no, it's it's good. Even even uh to these days, I have a friend that's in the temps. He just kind of joined maybe three four months ago, and he's he's loving it. So I'm happy for him. Bass singer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Happy, happy for him. Uh, yeah. Also, you did do uh, Dennis's group as well. Uh, Dennis's group, 
to me, I would say is a big change from the original. And I don't know how I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like Dennis's show is completely different, but I feel like he wants the audience to enjoy themselves, even though they're probably not watching the actual attempts, which is it's cool to to some people, you know. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but sometimes I feel like the songs can go on a little bit too long. But maybe that's just me, you know. Uh, they wanted. Well, of course, you know, when Dennis replaced David, yeah, this was in the temps for a long time. So he had a lot of songs that he caught back. To, so he kind of wanted to pursue those songs yeah, as his show, which would make their show different than Otis's group. Yep. At the same time, Dennis still had to cover the hit, My Girl, Just My Imagination, The Way You Do the Things You Do. Can't get around those if you're going to be a temptation group. Yes. So, yeah, that show was completely different. I was honored to get that phone call because at that time, Dennis was sick. And, you know, I felt honored to stand in until he got better. You know, that was a huge shock. Yeah. For me. And, you know, so once he passed, Otis didn't want the group anymore. So no matter who was the manager, well, this was Edward's temptations. So it just kind of starts sinking. Yeah. I can understand. It's like that's like the, the, that's like saying David reference temptation, but David passed in you know 91. It's like, well, is it David's group? So I can yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Uh wow. Okay. Uh and, and then you know you, you find yourself kind of just doing other things and now you're in voices of classic soul that's doing well you're kind of doing your own solo stuff so how do you feel you know just now just being able to just be in a group and then be by yourself at kind of different times just like okay i'm in a group i'm doing this then i'm singing by myself and i'm doing this but they kind of don't they don't overlap so you get to kind of have freedom still yeah yeah and that's you know most important for me is I want to work for myself. I do not want to be an employee and, you know, doing all the work and I'm just an employee. I don't reap none of the benefits of royalties, which I shouldn't, or anything that's, you know, I want to be a part of something. And what I mean by that is, if I can't be a partner or anything like that, then I'm not going to put all my eggs into that basket. So, you know, just valuable footage, information that I've learned being with both groups. And I I got the credentials. And the credentials take very good care of me. So I'm, I'm going to roll with that. And I got to bet on Theo. So that's what I'm with that. Bet on Theo. I mean, that's, that's that's a good way to go. I mean, obviously, betting on Theo is that's a good thing to do. So it's great. Um, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to ask you one final question that's gonna encompass Theo as a whole, as far as singing goes. As far as singing goes, mm-hmm. um, if you had to put together a Theo medley, three songs of your best sing like the song that you think you sing the best in a medley what would those songs be one would be this is my promise oh, of course gotta be um and i'm sure you know, i've always been a teddy pendergrass fan so i'm coming out next year i'm going to make a release on that with a few of his songs so we'll turn off the lights Come on and go with me. Okay. That would be my medley. Okay. I like it, actually. <laughs> no one has ever redone Teddy. Teddy's hard to do. Yes. Very. I'm hell of an entertainer and singer as well of an entertainer. And I just decided to take on that challenge. I can I can see that. A lot of people 
try to uh, do Teddy. They don't necessarily get it all the way, but I feel like if anybody can do it, you can do it. So definitely, definitely got this. Uh, well, look, ladies and gentlemen, we're you know out of time. We you know probably do a part two. We can talk about anything. Obviously, this guy's good to talk to. Well, look, it was nice talking to you, Theo. Uh, it's a good, good thing. Uh, if I I'm going to suggest a video for people to watch if they haven't watched up. I have two videos to suggest for Theo. I would suggest watching The Temptations at, oh, I don't know if it's Aruba. I don't know. Sinbad Summer Jam. Yep, I would right. suggest that. That's a good clip. Uh, probably my favorite clip was not even you singing lead. It's like your background vocals in that, in that specific uh, video. And another clip I would suggest, I would say uh, the tops and Wayne Brady. For some reason, I like that video. When you guys saw Wayne Brady, so I would suggest those two. So, tops, Wayne and Brady, and Temps and Aruba. I would definitely think you guys will enjoy those. Uh, you know, just little Easter eggs. And, and then if you want to see the beginning by TV clip, I'm sure that's up somewhere on YouTube. Just search Getting by Temptations. Uh, and look, that's all I got to say for now. Uh, Theo, do you have any closing remarks? Anything you want to say? I'd like to say to my fans, I love you guys and I appreciate your support. And I'm still here. <laughs> still here. Still here. It's been stupid. Well, people, that's all. That's all we got to say. Uh, from Theo, from me, I'm going to say prime time is all the time and we are out.